recording using my Android device. Now I'm going to explain to you how you can actually understand resonance. So let me just take a quick look and see whether I can find the resonance applet. Okay, in this resonance applet, uh, you can find that well, because this is an extremely small screen in my Note 3, but you can see that actually I've designed it such that uh, let's check out the stylus and let's change this to 0 0.5 so to speed up the simulation and the obvious trade-off is that the simulation will now be showing steps of only half a second so there are certain values that may not be reached in time so now imagine there are all these little masses here they are all identical in mass and the spring constant uh, that is attached to the masses are all the same. So let's say for simplicity, the masses are 1 kilogram and the spring constant is also 1. So what happens if uh, you were to just let the system move in free oscillation? So you'll find that because the initial displacement is 0, so it will not move. So it will stay where it is. So imagine if there's a driving force. So all these driving force are... Uh, of equal amplitude but the only difference is they are spaced out according to their frequency so according to the x-axis this will be the various driving force frequency so if the driving force frequency is exactly equal to the natural frequency of the system so let's quickly look at it okay let's zoom out Okay, so quickly you can see that the actually the maximum displacement graph is because of this. So you check on the blue blue checkboxes, you can see that they are actually all these masses that are being driven by a green arrow, which represents the driving force. And I've designed it such that the amplitude actually shows uh, maximum amplitude actually shows in the red outline. So let's pause it. Okay, and then initialize it so that it remembers. So let's change the damping level to let's say very light and then we run again. So very quickly you can see that it again pushes the maximum amplitude up uh, as, as depicted by the red dots. So it shows you the typical profile of the resonance curve. So again what it means is simply when the driving frequency is equal to the natural frequency of the system when the system is of a very light damping value you will find that it actually still reach a maximum amplitude but now it's uh, reaching a maximum amplitude of about 9.97 okay as shown uh, in the simulation okay so let's uh, pause it okay and then initialize so now you can expect me to move on to the various uh, damping levels. So let's say light damping and we can click play. So what do you expect the graph to look like? So again, uh, what it means is the free driving frequency when equal to the resonance to the natural frequency of the system, in this case it's depicted by this mass, will actually reach a maximum amplitude of this particular value. So say it's 3. 3.33 but as you can probably see that there's actually a slight shift to the left that this point over here actually is able to achieve a higher amplitude than when the driving frequency is equal to the natural frequency so let's uh, move on to the other damping levels because I like to show you uh, all the various graphs so let's uh, initialize again so that it remembers the points have been achieved so let's go for moderate damping okay again you can see that moderate damping so the the peak now is no longer at the uh, big f over f not equal to one but actually it occurs somewhere around here which is roughly 0 0.9 for the case where the damping is moderate when the damping coefficient is equal to 0 0.6 so assuming that the simulation has run for a long enough time, you should be able to see the maximum amplitude achieved. Assuming that time step can simulate it. Okay, so let's pause it again. Uh, initialize. 
and let's move on to the second last activity which is the critical damping so critical damping basically means that the, the system is being driven in a system that's free of any external force this particular critical damping system will decay to its zero amplitude in the shortest possible time but in the case where there's actually driving force you can see that these are all the various responses that are recordable using the simulation so uh, this is what you typically get you, you find that actually the maximum amplitude doesn't really quite occur anymore at any of these values but probably at the value that the uh, f over f naught is equal to zero so you roughly get one over there but other than that the rest are actually not quite the maximum anymore so finally let's move on to the heavy damping so heavy damping so what do you expect heavy damping to look like okay so let's run again so uh, if you are predicting as what i have uh, suggested you will find that actually it is again a lower line even lower than the critical damping so heavy damping means that the system if in the absence of any driving force it will actually decay to the zero displacement position through a very very long time explaining the other features in the applet that i've made you can actually check on this box and you can see that uh, you can actually see that the, there are actually plus and minus to the oscillation of the various 100 point mass systems all individually being driven by a driving force of, uh, of increasing frequency uh, from 0 to 2f naught. Okay, so with that, I think I thank you for listening to my tutorial.